Hey everybody, I am John Merritt from BornToProduce.com, a Steinberg certified training centre, and in this short video, we are going to look at the most common problems people run into when using Cubase for the first time, like not getting any sound, no sound in the audition window, missing content, and all of that. The timestamps are in the description. Let's do this. So the first problem many people get is no sound at all. So the first thing you want to check is go to Studio, Studio Setup, and you want to check the sound card settings, which is under VST Audio System. Make sure that you actually have something in here. So if it says no driver, you won't get any sound. And you'll usually have a choice between if you've got a dedicated sound card, which I have my Fireface, so I can select that. Otherwise, you'll be using the generic low latency ASIO driver. But as long as you've got something selected there, you'll be good. So you still might not be getting sound, so if you're not, check the audio connections. So again, studio tab, audio connections, and under outputs and the stereo out, which is usually minimized like this, if you just click that to maximize it, and then you can select the right and left channels, or left and right, I should say. And then that should be the final thing. And then you should be getting sound out of Cubase. Now I will mention briefly that if you are sort of recording multiple instruments in Cubase and you need to be sending out different mixes to different headphones for different musicians, then you'll be using the control room. So the control room adds another sort of layer to Cubase's audio routing. Now for most people, it's totally unnecessary to use the control room. You won't need to activate this and it's much easier just to leave it turned off. But if you are using the functions of the control room for recording and you do need to use it again, once you've activate it you'll see the monitor out left and right make sure these are connected if you go to the outputs tab you'll see that, that has now been disconnected because you've changed the output routing and it's going through the control room so if at any time you do turn off the control room like so then you'll go back to the outputs tab and you'll find that it's not connected so you need to reconnect these two inputs and that's almost all of the problems that you'll find that actually lead to you getting no sound at all out of Cubase so the second problem that people run into a fair amount in Cubase is that we have sound in the project window, but we don't have sound whenever we audition samples, even though it looks like it's playing. Now this is very easily solvable. Again, it's to do the control room. So we go to studio, audio connections. And if you go to the control room tab, you'll see that it's activated, but it's not connected. The device port isn't connected, okay? And if you go to the outputs tab, you'll see that the device ports are connected. So again, if you are using the control room, you wanna make sure that the ports are connected in the control room and not in the outputs tab. So just connect these in the control room, which will automatically disconnect them from the outputs. So again, if you're using the control room, this little button's on blue, then you need to make sure that the device port is set to your speaker output and that your normal output section is always not connected. Then you'll find that you can audition all your samples and also play a track. So another problem that is certainly seems to be more common with Cubase 10 is that the logical presets options are grayed out. Obviously you can see mine, but sometimes you'll find that this is actually grayed out and it means you can't access any of the MIDI sort of options. And also on the context menu as well, this logical presets menu will be grayed out. And that sometimes happens because the installation just messes up and doesn't put the presets in the right folder. So I'll show you where to get them. And you'll be able to find those presets in your program files directory, Steinberg, Cubase 10 or Cubase 9.5 if that's the version that you've got installed. Presets, and then we wanna copy this whole presets directory, copy that, then navigate to users, your username, app data, which is a hidden folder, so you might have to unhide the files on your computer. Roaming, Steinberg, Cubase 10, 64, and then presets folder, so you just paste that folder into here. And then when you relaunch Cubase, you'll find that your logical presets is now available. So if you generally have missing content as well in your media browser, so let's say not all of your sample packs are installed, which also seems to be quite a common problem. And to solve that, you just really wanna get the Steinberg download assistant. So just Google that. Download the correct version for your operating system, of course. So once you've downloaded and installed that, just open it up update the latest version if that's necessary then just pick the version that you actually own 
click on it and then download the full version. Now this is a huge download, but obviously the download assistant means that you can download it in chunks if you like. If you turn off your computer, it's no problem. It will save what it's got so far and then just continue the download from there. Bit of a pain in the ass, but that's the only way to make sure you've got absolutely everything. Once it's downloaded, it'll ask you if you want to install. Obviously just install and then everything in there will be installed, including all of the extra sample packs and or instruments, whatever it is that's missing from your original download. So another very common problem in Cubase is the track stuttering as it playbacks. Now, this is really frustrating and is caused by CPU overload. Now, there's a couple of things you can do to help this out. So let's look at the first one, Studio tab, Studio Setup, and under your VST audio system, and then your sound card, if you've got a dedicated sound card, you can go to the control panel and change the buffer size, the latency. Now it depends on the speed of your processor and how sort of powerful it is what you sort of go for. Now 512 for me is pretty much good enough to be able to play back even massive projects, it's no problem at all. If you have a much lower buffer size, then it will tax the CPU much more heavily so you may run into problems so just check that it's large enough for your computer also in vst audio system you've got audio priority so you stick that on boost as your guard level can be high multi-processing should definitely be active i don't actually like the steinberg audio power scheme it does a few things which are a little bit unnecessary so i will show you one thing that you can do in your window settings to make sure that you don't get clicks and pops as it plays so if you bring up the control panel in windows go to system and security power options and then just click on the power plan that's selected change plan settings and then we go to advanced power settings and then scroll down go to processor power management and expand minimum processor state now normally this is on like five percent you want to change that to a hundred percent so it will use a little bit more power than normal but it means that when your track suddenly gets to a point where it's there's a lot suddenly going on so usually like the drop of your track and then suddenly like extra instruments suddenly start playing and the cpu load increases it won't suddenly stutter it will be ready and it will just be able to play that smoothly now of course that depends i mean if you've got a very sort of slow or not very powerful computer then you might just be running into that problem anyway uh, but this is definitely one thing that you want to check and change to 100 percent before you do anything else so the last thing I want to discuss is the playback switching between Cubase and another program that uses audio. So a lot of the time people who are watching our tutorials will be obviously doing something in Cubase and they want to go and watch the tutorial video for a bit and then switch back to Cubase. Now on most sound cards that's absolutely fine, they won't have a problem with it, but some sound cards, especially the sort of onboard sound cards that you'll find on motherboards or in laptops, they just have a problem with that, they won't be able to cope. So what you can do is go to Studio, Studio Setup, and then under VST Audio System, just tick this box, Release Driver when application is in background. Now it means it'll take a couple of seconds every time you then click on Cubase for it to reinitialize the drivers for Cubase, but it means that you'll be able to watch something either you know in Internet Explorer or in the video player or whatever it is and then go back to Cubase otherwise Cubase can sort of tend to lock up the audio for itself so if that was helpful to you please do hit the like button subscribe for more and hit the alert button if you'd like to be kept up to date with the latest Cubase 10 and music production tutorials that we're going to be releasing many of this coming year and of course we have absolutely loads of tutorials on our site all about different styles of music production how to learn cubase fl studio how to mix edm how to remix how to do all sorts of stuff so if you want a boost to your music production skills then please go and check them out because i reckon they'll be really helpful for you thank you for watching